love our young people. Yes. Amen. Amen. A lot of times we don't think about young people struggling with strongholds and bitterness. But they do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They do. Appreciate those testimonies. Appreciate what God did in their hearts. They can't. Philippians chapter number four. Philippians chapter number four. You can remain seated. I'm only going to read one verse and share with you what God laid on my heart for tonight. God actually laid this thought on my heart yesterday morning early. I was sitting at the breakfast table drinking my coffee. I don't think I even ate breakfast. I just drank my coffee. I don't know why it's called a breakfast table. It should be a coffee table. And I had this, this verse came to my mind and I just started jotting down some notes yesterday morning meditating on it yesterday and um, it's going to give you what God has for us when we get finished we'll go next door and eat some cereal all right all right Philippians 4 verse number 13 read it read it read it with me ready I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me I think only about about half of you read that so let's Let's read that together, all of us. Ready? I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I want to preach tonight for a few minutes on this thought. Stop saying you can't. Stop saying you can't. Father, help us, I pray. As we take this small, short, but powerful verse, I pray that you would help it to speak to hearts. I pray, Lord, that those that are sitting in the service tonight that find themselves many times saying, I can't, Lord, that this verse and this message would speak to them tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Three simple points if you're taking notes. You can write these down. These verses were written by the Apostle Paul. We look at the Apostle Paul as probably one of the greatest Christians that ever lived. I mean, we would be honored today to be able to be friends with someone like the Apostle Paul. We'd be privileged to be able to sit and listen to the Apostle Paul preach or share with us what God's doing in his life. And in these verses, Paul is giving some personal experiences and he's trying to encourage the church at Philippi with some truth that I believe all of us could benefit from. He said in verse number 11, not that I speak in respect of want, but I have learned in whatsoever state I am, whether it's South Carolina or Maryland or Georgia or Maryland, I bump into more people talk about wanting to move to Carolina. You better not do that. We moved up here, now you stay up here. I know that ain't what Paul said, but it'll still work. Whatever state I am, they're with to be content. And he goes on in the next verse. You like how I wrestled the scriptures right there? It was pretty, wasn't it? I know both how to be abased. I know how to be made low. I know how to be humbled. And then he said, I know both how to abound. I know how to prosper. I know how to have success. I know how to be on top of the world. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Now he said in verse 12, I'm instructed to do this. I'm instructed to be content. I'm instructed to be happy no matter where I'm at and what's going on. And then he says in the next verse, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. If we were to be asked tonight, can you be made low? Can you be, uh, how, how could you handle being abased? You said, you'd probably say, I couldn't, I can't. Paul said, I can't. I learned. Is everybody still with me? He said in verse 13, I, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. In other words, he says, I'm, I've learned to be happy. I've learned to be content. I've learned to enjoy living for God and serving God even when everything's not going my way. That's good, 
Because he says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Three points I want to give you tonight. God gave me yesterday morning. I want to give you these three. Number one, write this down. We see, first of all, the personal application. Paul says, I can. I can. You know, we like talking about Christianity in vague and impersonal terms many times, but it's not impersonal. It involves your life and my life. The kids came back from teen camp and they all had on those blue t-shirts with this, the church, uh, the camp theme on it. And it said relationship, not religion. Amen. I don't think a lot of people let it click that this, this, this Christianity thing, it's, it's personal, it's between you yeah. and God. Yeah. Yeah. If you only look at Christianity, if you only look at the church, if you only look at serving God in a group sense, in a corporate sense, you're gonna miss out on a lot of important things. Enoch walked with God. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And you go through and look at the examples given through the scriptures and these men, these saints of God, even some of the women that are mentioned in the Bible, they had an intimate personal relationship with God and it was to them personal, it was real. A lot of people are being toted and carried by other people. Put them on an island by themselves, they wouldn't be a Christian two days. Put them in a city somewhere where there's no accountability and they wouldn't stand for God and serve for God two weeks. They're only where they're at now because somebody's been toting them and carrying them. They've been riding piggyback on somebody else, their spouse or their parents or their pastor or somebody in the church. But you and I have got to understand this. We're going to have to get to the place to where a relationship with God is personal. Paul didn't say we can do all things. He said, I, I can. One of the most common mistakes of Christians today is thinking that the promises of God do not apply to them. They don't believe God's promises apply to them. They don't believe that God loves them. They don't believe that God can hear their prayer. They believe God can hear prayer, but they don't believe God can hear their prayer. Well, I'm just gonna be real honest with you. God hearing prayer in a general sense ain't worth two cents to me if he can't hear my prayer. I mean, we're not Catholics. I don't go and look through a knot hole at a man and tell him what to pray for me for when I can go to the very throne room of God and pray myself. But most people don't believe that God can hear them when they pray. They don't believe that God wants his best for them. They don't believe that God can use them. They know God can use people, but they never think about God wanting to use them. They don't believe God can do, wants to do, or will do anything with them. Sit in services just like this, and it's a general sense, not a very specific precision working of God. God wants to do something with me. Amen. God wants to hear my prayer. God loves me. We have to understand that God loves you and he loves me specifically. They don't believe that God wants to bless them. It's worse than having an inferiority complex. An inferiority complex is when you don't think much of yourself But the problem is, we don't think much of God. I'm not trying to pump you up. This is not a motivational speech. I didn't get this off of joelosteen.com. I'm telling you right now, this is the word of God. Paul said, I can, you can. It's a personal application. And until you get to the place to where Christianity is between you and Jesus Christ, you don't have a relationship. Say, our family, that's for me and my house. We'll serve the Lord. That's for me and my house. It starts with a personal 
serving the Lord. We have to understand God's word applies to me. It applies to you as an individual. God's promises are for you. Just letting this soak in here for just a minute. God's eyes are on you. It is your name that's graven in his hand. God's ear is inclined to your cries. It's time you stop saying, I can't, and start saying, I can. I can. Not my preacher can, my church can, my parents can, my spouse can. I can. This thing, is, this thing between me and God, it's real. I, I, I'm shocked at how many Christians say they believe the Bible. They profess to believe the Bible. They don't believe half of it. They don't believe half of it. I'm just going to get real honest with you. I'm going to get real blunt here for just a second. You're not a Bible believer if you don't pray. Don't say I'm a Bible believer. I believe the Bible. No, you don't believe the Bible. Because the Bible says if you pray anything in his name, he heareth you. Right. Whatever you ask in his name, he giveth, giveth it to you. You don't believe that. Because you don't ever pray. Right. Right. Amen. I wasn't going to labor this point, but I feel like there's a, little, I feel like there's a stump in here. Yeah. Brother Snipes, Brother Snipes came to me before church. He said, he said, I'm, I, he said, uh, he said, we need some stump pullers. I said, I'm going to tell you the best stump puller in here is an amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's exactly right. When God's people start saying amen, that's what pulls the stumps up. Amen. When the preacher's preaching and everybody gets real quiet, that's where the stumps are. That's exactly right. I tell you to pull the stump up when the preacher's preaching the truth, just say amen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. They got it quiet in here a few times this morning. Amen. I know it's hard to say amen when you're getting pummeled in the nose. I know that. Word of God was pummeling some noses this morning. The Holy Ghost is pummeling some noses right now. Amen. Don't say right. you believe the Bible if you don't tithe. Amen. You don't believe the Bible. You just say you yes. do. Amen. Because if you really amen. believe the Bible, the Bible says if we brought our tithes yes. into the storehouse, it opens up the end of heaven yes. and it pour out blessings that there's not room enough to receive it. Yes. If you don't tithe, you don't believe the Bible. Amen. Don't say you believe it, you don't. If you don't go soul winning, you don't believe the Bible, you don't really believe lost people are gonna spend eternity in hell. You don't really believe that or you tell people about Jesus. So I'm gonna say what I said a minute ago and some of y'all looked at me kind of funny. Most people that say they believe the Bible don't. They just say they do. If we really believe the Bible, if we really believe Jesus was coming again and he could come back any minute, we'd be so busy trying to get as many people saved as we could. Before Jesus come back, we wouldn't have time for all this foolishness that we're doing. Getting back to what I was trying to say. This relationship between you and God, it's personal. It's personal. Maybe you need to quit saying we and us and our church and, and, and start talking about what's going on between you and your maker. It's a personal application. Paul said, I can. Not only do we see the personal application, I'm not done with that point. One, one, of the things, one of the things that I've noticed with young people is that it's usually they're up in their upper teens. If they can stay in church past graduating high school, which that's rare anymore. I don't know, I'm gonna stop giving out diplomas. Because it seems like when you give them a diploma, they never come back. That's right. Amen. Some, some, somehow or another, something's in people's head. When I get my high school diploma, I don't have to go to church anymore. I'm not sure where that ever came from. Amen. But if they, don't, if they don't get hooked up in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, it's usually on up in their upper, older years before it ever clicks that they can have a personal relationship. Right. Right. Like all the young people, it's like they're doing what they're doing because it's what their parents want them to do. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, sir. 
They're, they're here because their parents bring them. Their parents take them. The parents are pushing them and promoting them. But when they ever get to the place to where they can start making their own decision, then you find out really what they had. You'd be shocked at the spouses that wouldn't come to church if their other spouse didn't bring them That's right. or push them or say something. Exactly I mean, we've got some folks in our church that come and nobody in their family comes with them. And I admire your faithfulness. I mean, that's a blessing. Some of you ladies, you come every service and your husband doesn't come with you. And some of you men come and your wives don't come with you. I admire your faithfulness and your encouragement to my heart. But I'm just gonna be honest with you. It's gotta get real between you and God if it's gonna weather the storms. Yeah. Got to be real. Personal application. Secondly, we see the potential accomplishments. Paul said, I can do all things. Now, I'm from the deep south. Just no, just no country hillbilly. But that all things, that's a lot of stuff. That's a, that covers a lot Amen. of territory. Amen. When I read that, I thought, I wonder what that all things means. So I looked it up in the Greek concordance. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I did that because it, it, it made it make so much more sense. All things means each, every, any, all, the whole, everyone, all things, and everything. Well, I understand that so much better now. I can do all things. I, I guess what I was trying to figure out was did Paul really mean all things when he said, I can do all things. And I realized not only was there a personal application, but there was the potential accomplishment, the potential all things. I can do all things. Wow. The question is, does it really mean that? Or was Paul just evangelistically speaking? Does that really mean that I can get my prayers answered? Does that really mean that I can raise my kids to serve God? I can do all things. Does that mean that I can bring people to Christ? Preacher, you just don't understand, I can't see. That's, that's what I'm preaching on. You got to stop saying I can't. I can't. Preacher, I get down to pray and I can't. Stop saying, stop saying you can't. Does that really mean that I can serve the Lord in a significant way? Well, preacher, you just don't understand my background. I can't stop right there. Preacher, you just, don't, you just don't understand. I can't stop. Stop saying. I can't. Does that mean I can be a godly husband? Well, he said I can do all things. I'm pretty sure that fits in the all things category. Are you telling me, preacher, that I can be a godly wife? Yeah. Yeah. Are you telling me I can, I can respect my parents and I can obey my parents and I can be a, I can be a good young person and, and support my parents? And Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Amen. Does, that, are you, does that mean I can accomplish something for the Lord with my life? Yep, that pretty much fits in that I can do all things. Does that mean that I can give financially to the work of God even when it looks like I can't afford it? Pretty much means I can do all things. Does that mean I can make it through this storm that I'm going through right now, preacher? Does that mean I can make it through the storm? Pretty much. I can do all things. Does that mean I can survive this fiery trial? Yeah, that's what it means. Does it mean I can salvage my marriage? Yeah, it means that too. Does it mean I can enjoy going to church again? Yeah, it yes. means, means pretty Amen. much everything. Right. Amen. I mean, you just fill in the blank. Yeah. The question is, what do you want to do? Right. Paul said, I can do 
all things through Christ. So what is it you want to do? What do you want to do? What's in your heart for God to do with you or in you or through you? What is it you want to accomplish for God on this side of eternity? What is it? Hey, I can do all things. Here's our problem. We don't believe that. We just don't believe it. It's amazing how many people never try to serve God because they don't think they'll ever be able to. It's amazing how many people will never attempt to do anything for God because they do not believe it's even possible for them to do anything for God. Was it William Carey said, attempt great things for God, expect great things from God. And I would rather, I would rather try and fail than fail to try. When I've got a Bible verse that says, I, I, you, me, us, I can do all things. It's amazing how much of our vocabulary is filled with I can't. I can't. I can't. My kids hear it all the time. My kids hear it all the time. I say, don't say you can't. Don't say you can't. Stop telling me you can't Quit telling me you can't do it and start figuring out a way to do it. Right. Right. We was working in the flower bed yesterday, man. I don't know, I'm hurting all over more than I am anywhere else. <laughs> I mean, I woke up this morning, felt like I'd been in a, in, a, in a 12 round boxing match. I was sore all over. Pulling weeds, pulling stumps, and me and Stuart down there and he's, I said, I can't pull that. I got a bad back. You got to pull that bush up. And boy, he pulled and pulled. I can't. I said, don't tell me you can't. It'll come up. I can't. Pull it up. Get mad at it if you have to. Snatch it out of the ground. Here it goes. I said, look at there. You could. You could. That's right. My point was this. I just, I can't, I can't handle somebody saying, I can't. Right with a half-hearted effort. Yes, sir. Yes, I can't. There it is. Right. I can't. Yeah. What, is it, what is it you want to do? Well, I want to raise godly kids. What's stopping you? I can't. No, that's what's stopping you. Right. 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 Yes, that's right. I want to have a good marriage. What's stopping you? You just don't understand. That's your problem right there. Stop making excuses and get at it. Yes. I can do all things through Christ. I don't think, I'm, not, I'm not being humanistic. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching the Bible. And we're fixing to get to the third point and it's going to bring it all together. My point is this. Before anything's going to happen, you need to know what it is you want to do. I've got so many people floating downstream like a stick. Just bumping into whatever. Life is just happening to them. They've got no, no course. They've got no direction. They have no idea what they want to do and who they want to be and what, it's just, life is just happening to them. Right. You start doing that when you're 10 and 12 and 15 and 20, you'll be doing it when you're 65 and 80. Right. You'll still be just being floating down life stream, having no direction whatsoever. What do you want to do with your life? I'm not talking about in the grand scheme of a career or a trade. I'm talking about what would you like to see God do with you? What kind of daddy do you want to be, sir? It's Father's Day. Still Father's Day. What kind of daddy do you want to be? What kind of mama do you want to be? What kind of Christian do you want to be? Stop making excuses. If you have to, get a piece of paper and write it out. Give some clarity. Paul said, I can do all things. We see the potential accomplishments. I remember growing up, I used to read. I loved to read. I used to read all the time. I still read a pretty good bit, but not as much as I used to. I'm the world's worst about buying a book, read half of it, and then buy another one and read half of that one and never finish the book. Anybody else ever do that? Yeah. I got books everywhere, all my desk, beside my bed, everywhere. And I used to read, and I used to think to myself, I could write a book. I thought, ah, I can't write a book, man. That's, I thought, well, somebody, somebody wrote these books. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, used to, I used to read the newspaper as a little boy and read the articles. 
And I'd always read who wrote it. It was either the top or the bottom. Who wrote that? Who wrote that? I thought, man. I wrote an article one time and I sent it to the newspaper. I was 11. They printed it in the paper. Not in the letter to the editor. They wrote it, put it in there like a, like a, like a real column. It was on the evils of alcohol. Amen. Couldn't believe they put that in the paper. The evils of alcohol. Several columns. At the bottom, it said, Stacy Schiff, age 11. I went, wow. All I'm saying is this. I used to sit around and think and dream about things that I wanted to do. And instead of making excuses why I couldn't. I remember as a little boy, I used to sit on the floor at my, in my, my Mima's house. It's my daddy's mom. We called her Mima. I used to sit on the floor and listen to those records of those quartets back in the 70s. I used to sit on the floor and just play records. Anybody ever do that, records? It's kind of like a CD, but it's big and black. <laughs> okay, all right. And it, uh, it, it played on a needle. And the needle carried the, yeah, you got it. And I'd sit on the floor and I'd listen to those quartets singing those old songs. That song I played just a moment ago, there's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others. He'll do for you. I used to listen to that song as a little boy. And I'd sit there mesmerized as they played the instruments and the pianos and I'd hear the four-part harmony, and all the other kids were outside playing, and I was sitting in Meemaw's bedroom playing, I was sitting there for hours and listening to those records, and I thought, well, I want to sing like that. I want, I want my family to sing like that. I want me and my wife and my kids to get up and sing like that. Brother Frank, that was desires God put in my heart. I mean, as a boy, and I listened to the songs, I listened to the words in those songs. I thought, man, that's a beautiful message in that song. And every other line, it rhymes. It's like poetry put to music. And I used to sit there and listen to those words. As I grew older, I thought, man, I want to write a song. I'll never forget the first time I wrote the word, the song Perfect Sacrifice. You've never even heard it. Our family, my mom and dad, and my, my brother and I, we recorded that song and they played it on the WGUN in Atlanta. It went to number 14 on the charts. I'll never forget it. Jesus was a perfect sacrifice. And I remember hearing that song coming over the radio thinking, I wrote that. Always wanted to and now I did. Yeah. Now that might not be a big thing to you, but what I'm saying is this. God put some things in my heart that I wanted to do. Amen. And instead of saying, I can't, yeah. I said, I believe I can. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. I saw Grace when she was a teenager. I walked in the back door of that church. She was standing there. My socks rolled down, rolled back up all by herself. <laughs> Good, not alive. She was the prettiest thing. I'm telling you. And I wrote her a little card the next day, and I said, I think I'm falling in like with you. <laughs> I said, that's the kind of woman right there I want to raise my kids. That godly, chaste, sweet, godly young lady, that's the kind of wife I want right there. And I'll never forget a few weeks we were, we were at some... We were at some meeting and all the ladies were inside and all the men were standing outside. It was a ladies meeting, but there was guys there. I guess they had to drive the vans or something. And I was there and I remember her daddy standing on the front porch and all these teenage boys standing around. He said, I'm looking at all you boys. This ain't none of y'all good enough for my girls. I stood off to one side and I thought, I bet I am. <laughs> now, I wasn't dumb enough to say that to his face. <laughs> I just thought that down in my heart. <laughs> he looked at all that motley crew standing around. But I had in my heart the kind of woman that I wanted to be married to. The kind of woman that I wanted to be the mother of my children. Here's the, pro here's the problem. Let me just, 
I'm trying to move past this point. Here's the problem with so many areas of the Christian life. Most people just settle for whatever they can get. They don't realize that I can do all things. Let me give you this third most important point. We see the personal application. We see the potential accomplishments, but thirdly, we see the power available. Well, this is what brings it all together right here. Now, if you just say, I can do all things, that's a very proud, that's a very boastful, and that is a very arrogant, humanistic statement to make. But Paul wasn't finished talking. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. You know what's very important? That you and God get on the same page about whatever it is you're doing. I'm going to tell you why a lot of people are not successful is because what they're trying to do doesn't line up with what God wants them to do. But if you could ever get your wants and your desires lined up with God's wants and desires and let God work through you, I promise you, it'll transform your life. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Jesus said in John 15, 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me, ye can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing, but with Christ, we can do all things. That is the power that is available to the born again child of God. So let me back up just a minute. Preacher, do you believe that I can still get my prayers through? Oh yeah, through Christ? Yeah, amen. Who Romans 8 says he's he's praying for us. He knows the the groanings. He maketh the intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Yes. I'm gonna tell you how powerful this power is that's available to the child of God. Even when you're on your face and all you're doing is moaning, you can get a prayer through. Right. <laughs> when all you're doing, Brother Ron, yeah. is going, oh, God, help me. And, God, and, 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 and Jesus says, that's good, so now take it from here. Yeah, amen, yeah. Father, here's, here's what he was trying to say right yeah, here. Yeah, there it is. Amen. I can do all things. Amen. I preach, I can't pray flowery prayers. Doesn't matter. It's those genuine prayers from the heart that gets God's attention anyway. Boy, I'd have a dollar for every time I got down to pray for my kids. I said, God, I don't know what I'm doing. Would you help me? Preacher, you pray like that? Oh, man, do I pray like that. Lord, help me raise my kids. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's in their heart. I don't know what what they're wanting to do. I I don't know what they're being faced with on a daily basis. God, would you just help me, please? Help me. I guess what I'm trying to say tonight is you need to stop saying you can't and start saying I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I read this verse last week, 2 Corinthians 4, 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Ephesians 3, 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Can I read that again? Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Boy, that goes good with I can do all things through Christ. That he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Colossians 1.29, Paul said, Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. But I think it's important that you and I understand that God empowers those that put forth the effort Preacher, you talk about believing God and, and tithing. And I'm just, what if what if I don't what if I don't what if I what if I tithe and He don't meet my need? Well, you'll never know, right? Amen. Because He will only meet the need once you've been obedient. Yeah. Right, right, that's right. What if I pray and He don't answer the prayer? He can't answer the prayer that's never prayed. Right. He can't bless the offering that's never given. That's 
He cannot honor the sacrifice that's never made. He will not unction and sanction and put his anointing on the work that's never done. And here's what we do. We go through life doing nothing for God and blaming him for it. I just don't know if I do what he's going to do. Oh, he, you don't have to worry about him. He'll do his part. The problem is not with God. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. God's working in us and God's strengthening and God's giving us the, the power, but you're going, to have to, you're going to have to get up off the recliner. You and I are going to have to put some feet on our faith and let God do something amazing. I want to conclude with this. Stop saying you can't and let God make it possible. I'm not, I'm not one of those name it and claim it preachers. You know that. I, 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 I have no confidence in that mess. But what I just preached to you is the Bible. And God wants to do amazing things with you. Not with us, with you, sir. I wish I, could, I wish I could walk up and down every pew and touch every one of you on the shoulder and say, God, God wants to do something amazing in your life. Right, right. God wants to do something amazing in your life. Every one of you. God wants to do something amazing in your life. Shane, God wants to do something absolutely unbelievable in your life. Don't be a spectator. Amen. Amen. Don't be one of those sitting on the bleachers watching the game. Yes, sir. And watching God do things with people and work miracles in people's life and never experience it for yourself. Stop saying I can't. Amen. And start claiming the scriptures. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight for liberty to preach. We thank you for the promises of your word. Or there are people sitting in this service right now that their bottom, their bottom line is they don't believe you. They just don't believe the promises of God apply to them. They've given up on ever, ever being used, being touched, being blessed in an amazing way. And they've just now decided to just settle for whatever they can get, whatever crumbs they can get. 